Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I'm afraid I am still using my phone. The, uh, the GoPro is at the uh, meeting its maker, as I said the other day, at the, uh, the manufacturer being repaired and or replaced. So you're gonna have to put up with some jerky, inferior phone footage. Um, I've come down today to Pangbourne on the River Thames to walk some of the Thames path. Uh, and possibly also for a trip down memory lane. I used to live in Pangbourne many years ago uh, and work here in fact as well. This was the location of my first proper job. It's a sleepy Thameside village but it does have a small industrial estate and a few businesses based here as well and this happened to be where my first ever sort of proper full-time job was uh, 25 or something years ago and so I have some familiarity with the uh, the pubs and the countryside nearby from that era although of course sadly in the interim much has changed always thought it would be quite a pretty old-fashioned station Pangborn <laughs> Cheers from the Swan Inn in Pangbourne. I have a landlord on tap, which uh, they definitely didn't do but back in my day. That's an improvement. One of the uh, things that makes this pub popular is its waterside setting, and uh, indeed. The very first time I arrived here, I arrived by boat, in a boat um, perhaps not dissimilar to that one there. Well over a quarter of a century ago, my friend Rob, his dad, was pootling along the Thames, a la three men in a boat, and uh, picked us up at Reading and dropped us off here. So this was the, uh, the first time I'd set foot in Pangbourne, was uh, straight off a boat, straight into a pub. Wonderful. Always had slightly mixed feelings about the Swan during my time here. This is what not my regular local one. I did live in Pangborn many years back. I love the connection with three men in a boat. This is, of course, the spot where on their return journey they decided to give up and just get trained the rest of the way back to London. But uh, it's always had this slight sort of pretension to it, and it's been veering very gastro pub for uh, the entire time I've known it. Uh, you know, you're greeted at the door and everything, and uh, do you have a reservation, that sort of thing. It doesn't really feel, well, it never has uh, in my time that I've known it felt like a genuinely pubby pub. Um, and perhaps that's just appropriate for the area, I don't know. But, um, so yes, to uh, illustrate how uh, a local pub in Pangbourne is inexorably going to turn into a more of a gastro pub, Pangborn has a Lamborghini garage. I don't recall this being a Lamborghini garage when I lived here, but it was certainly selling some kind of high-end cars. I wasn't really planning for this to be a pub crawl. I, I was, um, sorry, cars going past. I was uh, intending to do a walk along the Thames path, but I thought, you know, while I'm in Pangborn, I might as well show you my old haunts. Uh, and this is in fact the pub I used to go to more regularly, the Swan only occasionally. The cross keys. It's the, uh, the river Pang down there, from which Pangborn takes its name, where it flows into the Thames. Cheers. Uh, landlord on tap here as well. It seems to have uh, taken over the world. Just having a half. That's not a. Uh, it's not a distortion of perspective. It's um, I'm intending to go for a walk. This was always our uh, after-work pub of choice when I uh, worked in the area. Um, and, uh, it just it felt more like a pubby pub. The Swan's a bit sort of, you know, a bit touristy, a bit sort of uh, for out-of-towners, whereas uh, Cross Keys was a bit more of a, a local's pub and a pubby pub, and it still seems to be today, despite the uh, slight lick of gastro pub type paintings and a sort of farrow ball interior. It's still quite a pubby pub. I have a lot of affection for Pangborn. Still, there's this uh, it's a very attractive bridge over the Thames here that leads over to Whitchurch, which we'll take a quick look at in a moment. And uh, it feels like a sort of a, a fitting, poignant sort of juncture to revisit here because uh, this was the, the site of my first proper full-time job. Just this week, I quit my 
third and quite possibly final full-time job. I wouldn't say I've retired as such, but I have no real desire to go back into full-time Monday to Friday type employment. I'm just going to do my own thing from now on. I would love to say, I would love to do one of those videos where I'm saying I'm, I'm becoming a full-time YouTuber, but uh, alas, I feel like I've recorded this bit of footage several times now and then just not bothered including it in a video, but uh, you know, even with hundreds of thousands of views and if you actually, you know, have signed up to the ads program, I doubt that would even pay for a single bottle of Gevre Chambertin, so uh, it doesn't seem like uh, I'm anywhere near it being a practical revenue stream, so I'm really not going to invest much effort in that. I will. Uh, I will find other ways to uh, to pay the bills, um, tinkering around with various projects, but hopefully uh, the, uh, the lack of the oppression of full-time employment will give me a bit more time, Monday to Friday at least, uh, to get out and uh, do a few more videos. Really lovely spot, Pangborn. I'd forgotten this is in fact a toll bridge. So the uh, bridge actually takes us over into Oxfordshire. Berkshire is, uh, uh, Pangborn is in Berkshire. Whitchurch on Thames here is in Oxfordshire. And we're now uh, also heading into the Chilterns and uh, <laughs> I'll get round to properly starting this walk. Well, I guess I'm walking now, but uh, you'll see some, uh, some very pleasant countryside, hopefully where the Chilterns meet the, uh, the River Thames. There were originally, or at least when I remember it, two pubs in Whitchurch. This, the uh, the ferry boat, I believe has now since closed, sadly, but uh, quite a smart looking building. So it'd be a shame if this can't at some point reopen in some form. Very pretty village indeed. Whitchurch, really manicured. I, I promise I am going to get on and do some of the Thames path, but first, one last pub. Greyhound, which I believe is still very much open for business. A really cute exterior, sort of quite cottagey, lovely hanging baskets, quite a low roof. I'm just saying, oh, the thing is, I'm not sure if I can do this one. Cheers from the Greyhound in Witchard. So some are only frequented infrequently, does that still count as we're frequenting? I only came here a few times when I uh, lived in the area because it seemed like such a, a huge leap to go over the river, but in reality it was 10-15 minutes from home, walk, not far at all really. But, um, this is um, actually I think probably one of the, the nicest of the three so far in terms of how it's been preserved inside. There's um, a few modern hints here and there, but um, um, you know, and the uh, that ubiquitous turquoise paint, which seems to just get everywhere in these pubs. But um, you know, if I try and scrub my eyes and ignore that a bit, there are at least corners here that are very reminiscent of how it was back in the day when I used to come here infrequently. And, um, still feels very much like a, a pubby pub, and especially when you consider what a what an incredibly smart, obviously well healed village Whitchurch is. It's a delight to see they still have at least one remaining puppy pub. <laughs> Jerky handhold camera while walking time. I, I would uh, I would strongly recommend if you're walking the Thames path to take a diversion. It's not even really a diversion. I think I'm on the Thames path right now. I think it follows this stretch of the road. And uh, that's uh, of the three pubs visited today. I think I uh, had the, uh, the greatest sense of pub magic there at the, the Greyhound in Witcher. Beautiful. Shame about the cars, but that's uh, always the issue with English villages, isn't it? Okay, finally going to get on a path now. This initial stretch out of Whitchurch along the Thames path towards Goring is a tad boring, if I'm honest. It's just a sort of tarmacked bridle way. In the, uh, the gap in the fence there, you can almost get a view of the house at Coombe Park, which is the reason why the Thames path doesn't follow the river, this section. Opening up a bit now, I do like a tree-lined avenue, if nothing else. Just saw a cyclist get to this point to turn around and go back the other way. Yeah, not sure I'd want to cycle down here. Very well carved beech tree there. 
placed, tree lined for hedge lined now. Start to get glimpses of the river from this point of the path. Sorry about the jerky camera work. As a reminder, I'm using my phone. Doesn't have anywhere near as good stabilization as the GoPro, but hopefully normal service will be resumed within, I don't know, a few days. Weirdly, I just bumped into the people who were sitting at the table next to me in the Swan. They're on the same walk uh, that little behind me, which is slightly awkward. Don't know if you can see that, but uh, the light is going a bit. It's only 2.30 or something in the afternoon, but uh, I think a rain shower is heading this way. That uh, view of the river would be slightly more glorious if that cloud would just move on, but uh, there you go, this is the way of things. Yep, definitely felt a few spots of rain, but uh, a little bit of cover here, going through a nice wooded section. The Thames path alongside the Thames. Oh, there's a, I don't know if you can see that, there's a pillbox down there. I'll zoom in through the trees. On the right hand side of the path now, the scenery has opened up at least a bit range of low hills. I suppose these are an outcrop of the Chilterns, perhaps. Just in case you want to see a video of some rain in a muddy puddle. I think the public bridleway heading off to the right there possibly provides a more direct route straight to Goring Station, but I'm not in a huge rush, so I'm going to meander leisurely along more of the Thames path, slightly slower way as it follows the river. Slows or Damsons or Bullisers, I can never tell which is which. I think those are the first sort of significant ones I've seen of the season so far. It's the railway bridge there, the line I'll be heading back to London on later on. I don't know if this is a Brunel Bridge, it's on the Great Western Line, it's rather a smart example. Just check my facts on Wikipedia and it is indeed designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. I thought it had a sort of, that kind of level of gravitas to it opening up again now and you can see where the uh, the Chilterns over there run down the uh, the ridgeway running along them and meet the Thames some old crumbling pile across the river there the sun's come out again and the uh, the water is almost twinkling always found this boathouse quite intriguing here one thing I've always been very fond of is that reflection sort of dappled reflection of the light on a surface that's sort of above the water. The sort of sunlight bounces off the water down there and then reflects from that uh, there's a white panelling. I wonder if there's a word for that. Am I allowed to use the word languid again? Such a satisfying sound to that word, but it uh, does seem to very much come to mind. Stretches of the River Thames if it's a river that you only really associate with central London, then you really should visit some of the greener, more verdant, more rural parts of the Thames along the Thames Path because uh, it can be lovely in places. It's quite a thing over there, isn't it? That glass box suspended over the river, presumably for riverside dinner parties. I wonder how that ever got planning permission. Approaching Goring now. The uh, the river's nicely lined with canal boats and other river-going craft. So yes, here I am in, uh, in Goring. Slightly mixed feelings about arriving here. Slightly bittersweet given that my favourite pub in Goring is no more. Perhaps we'll quickly walk past that. But um, I'm sure I can find some sort of acceptable pub stop to round off my stroll along the Thames. Over there is the Miller of Mansfield, but it's, it's much more like a hotel really. It's a, an attractive building on the side of it. This is my favourite pub uh, in Goring, the John Barleycorn. Alas, currently temporarily, you know, fingers crossed, temporarily closed. I think they're looking for a new management team, as they'd probably say in modern parlance, a new landlord or landlady to to run the pub. That was, uh, that was gorgeous inside. I had this, uh, I don't know if we can poke through the windows, that's a bit cheeky. There's a, can you see the bar billiards table? <laughs> it's probably a bit rude. There we go, bar billiards table in there. Lovely, uh, old fashioned, simple interior, very pubby. The Catherine wheel really is just round the corner. Uh, a minute and a half's walk at most from the John Barley Corn. When I first knew this pub, it was very simple and tiny inside, but um, I think quite a lot of this 
wing here is a more modern extension, at least I can't remember it being there before. So, um, not quite the same as it used to be, but, um, you know, in any other village this would be a thoroughly decent pub in its own right. <laughs> Cheers, have a pint of uh, Oxford Gold from Breakspear. I've always been quite a fan of Breakspear's beer. I think I've covered the Catherine Wheel before in another video when I did a walk up to the Bell at Oldworth. I fit in a quick pub stop here at the end of that outing. Points to one corner. No idea which one it's going to be. Um, so, yeah, it's not without its charm. It has been extended a bit, but, uh, you know, far rather have a pub like this than no pub, no pubby pub at all in a village like Goring. So I think that's probably about it for this video. Uh, I hope the quality has come out at least vaguely okay with uh, just doing this on my phone. Uh, the quality of the video coming out of my phone isn't terrible. Um, it may more be the um, Android version of LumaFusion that still seems to have where you are. I'd bore you with these technical details. Um, it seems to do some weird things to the uh, the coloration. So if I look unusually bright orange here, then um, you know I haven't been putting on fake tan. It is just some issue with color spaces or codex or whatever. Anyway, boring technical details. You don't come here for that. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope some of that made for vaguely entertaining viewing. And uh, cheers from Goring in um, Oxfordshire. And I'll see you on the next one.